Pumps it in, three minutes remaining in the quarter. Hannon finally, a double biter. And to bust it wide open, it's enough to send Alistair Clarkson out the back door. It's preliminary final week. Hard to believe. Katie Price, welcome to you inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich. Yeah, it's a little surreal, isn't it? Who would have thought we'd be sitting here talking about heading into a prelim? It's absolutely brilliant. So exciting. I'm so pumped. I uh, got the chance to sit with you um, at the Hawthorne match. That was quite an experience. You <laughs> dug your fingernails into me and a few times. <laughs> oh, did I now? Yeah, quit? you did. You're a bit, <laughs> bit, bit tense. I do. I get very tense, actually, and um, particularly against the Hawks. You know that they're going to come, and they certainly did. How satisfying was that, though? Um, I mean, you spoke last week about it, that I know so many Hawthorne supporters. You know one in particular, Stephen Quartermain. Have you cashed in that $400 uh, dinner? Well, I just cleared my debt because I've just doubled or nothing from the last oh. few times that we've played them and obviously lost on those oh, occasions. So I'm all clear. He was absolutely filthy. It's the way we like it. <laughs> hey, we've got double trouble on the podcast today. Um do you want to introduce our guests? Yeah, we've got both ends of the ground covered, which is sensational today. We've got a man making his podcast debut in Mitchie Hannon. Welcome. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we've got Michael Hibbert back for another one. Back again. So I'm glad Gorney's not here this time. So yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I was MIA last time, yeah. but um, it's great to have you on board, both of you. Mitch, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Inside Melbourne debutant, take us back to Friday night. Um, two finals in a row now. You've been uh, you've been absolutely sensational. What was the feeling like uh, post match? Uh, it's obviously pretty surreal. Uh, I've never played in front of such a crowd of, of that size two weeks in a row, especially on a Friday night. Um, so yeah, it's pretty amazing to just to be sort of in finals for one, but also sort of be be winning and enjoying the ride with the rest of the guys. D- did you think you'd be sitting here heading into a prelim final? I really didn't. Definitely not. I. Um, as you'd know, I had a, had a little bit of an up and down season in terms of um, some form and, and injury and I found myself in and out at certain times throughout the year. So um, you'd probably say about two months ago, this definitely wasn't on my radar to be playing finals footy, but here we are. Hippo, how are you feeling about it? Oh, just embracing it really. Um, it's obviously super exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're pinching yourself at the opportunity that we've got, a prelim. I mean, it is over in the West, but... Uh, yeah, as Mitch said, the last two games in front of 90 plus uh, thousand, it's been unbelievable. I mean, that first game against Geelong, where it was probably 70% Melbourne fans, um, the atmosphere is incredible and hope, hoping they get over to Perth because it'll be an unreal week. Yeah, we'll get to Perth um, very, very shortly, but let's um, recap what was a sensational win in yeah. front of another big Melbourne crowd um, at the MCG. I reckon it was probably 65 35, don't Just you reckon? Just the way we like Just it. Just the way we like <laughs> it. Just make those Hawthorne fans feel really, really uncomfortable. Um, obviously, they came. They came really hard uh, for us, both in the, the third quarter and uh, and in the start of the last quarter, Hibbo. How do you um, how do you settle the nerves out there? Yeah, there was some nerve-wracking times, obviously, especially down back. I think there was a few times in the game where we were really under the pump down back. Uh, they kept on pumping the ball in, but... To our credit, we um, we held our nerve pretty well, and um, you know dug our heels in and actually had a real crack and and got the game back on our terms. It was um, it's usually you know we pump the ball down our end and the ball will come out and you know the other team will get an easy goal. But it seemed like we were on the end of that this week, which was pretty good. We um, you know as I said we were fighting pretty hard and then would clear it out and. These boys, Mitch and Malky and uh, the big fellas up forward, actually get a goal for us and it actually you know, gives us a bit of a sigh of relief. But they're an, they're an unbelievable team. They have been for years. Um, it was it was awesome to get a win. What was going through your mind when Jared Ruffhead kicked that goal, the margin, then just 12 points? Yeah, it happens pretty quickly, especially in that last quarter where they started to get a bit of a, a, bit of a momentum swing in their favour. And um, look... I was up the other end of the ground, so I was a bit further away from the footy at the time. So, but I was just hoping that eventually the tide would turn and, and things would sort of fall our way. And then once that happened, we'd be able to sort of, you know, like I said earlier, get the ball back on our terms and, and try and get a few goals. Is that where the mind games start if you're a Hawthorne player? I'm told that they might have got just a, a touch <laughs> yappy. They did, yeah, definitely. Um, they had a couple of guys coming off the back of the square in Isaac Smith and um, a few other guys that were... Pretty confident in how they were going, uh, but that's that's all part of it. Um, it. It definitely can be a mind game when it comes down to that last quarter, and, and they were, were getting a bit of a run on. But um, yeah, 
like I said, it's just them just um, trying to get in our heads. But that's all part of footy. Is, I think up. I think a track late in the game might have. Um, I did say had a few actually. choice words to yeah. uh, James Sicily as well, which <laughs> made it even sweeter. <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. I think track could have the. Uh, the brains were in there. <laughs> like quite have the yeah. I don't know if I'd be picking out James Sicily either, just quietly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you can cop it just yeah, as yeah, equally yeah, back. Exactly. Um, Hebo, a moment which you were involved in was um, when James Gunston, uh, Jack. Jack Gunston, James Gunston, Jack Gunston uh, had a run at the run at the footy, um, and you had to um, turn on the afterburners. Yeah. Uh, takes that moment, and what were you thinking? Ah. Uh, Oh yeah, I think um, Puapua kicked it off the ground right in front of Jack and I think Nev was on him at the time. Nev had uh, put in a few hard efforts previous or prior to that and uh, he ran out of steam so I had to go and um, yeah, put the head down and tried to get the legs going as quick as I could. Uh, was worried about the hammies there at one stage but yeah, <coughs> but luckily for me the ball kicked to the right a little bit and I was able, able to push it over the line and uh, Jack wasn't able to soccer it off through the goals. So, um, yeah, nervous moments for the old hamstrings, that's e for sure. Everyone was very thankful for that. You, me you mentioned, um, just before you do, Caddy, uh, Neville Jetta. He's, the accolades have been flowing thick and fast uh, since that match, and deservedly so. Uh, didn't make the All-Australian side, which many people think he probably should, or the squad at least. Um, he's in terrific form, isn't he? Yeah, oh, it, you just know what you're going to get from Nev week in, week out. He's an um, unbelievable player. Uh, Probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one players, pound for pound, I think, in the league. He can play on talls and smalls, and he's just um, he just gets the job done. You know, you might not get his 30 touches, but you know, every one-on-one -on -one contest he's in, he'll either win it um, or at least half it. And um, you know, he plays on the best players every week, like a Bruce, and kept him goalless. So um, he's my favourite player to play with at the club, as long as well as Mitchie, of course. <laughs> you got to say that when the bloke's sitting yeah, next to you, don't you? <laughs> How have you pulled up? Because obviously last week there was a little bit of doubt maybe or light training. Wasn't what? there some theatre in the league? Yeah, yeah. there was what, a little bit. What, what was going on? There was a bit of, <laughs> bit of carry on. I think it must have been a slow news week. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's pretty much scheduled Media. for a, for a, uh, a, a lighter week. I had a bit of a tight quad and um, you know, last time I had a tight quad and trained through it, uh, I ended up pinging it, which was about two months ago. So I spoke to the coaches and said maybe go inside and finish my training in there and um, yeah it got blown up a little bit I was fine I was always going to play and I, I pulled up fine um, quads good uh, hammies are a bit tight after that run but no uh, no nah, nah, I'm all good and pulled up really good and we'll train today and tomorrow and um, be ready for Perth great great stuff Mitchie, how uh, have you pulled up I mean finals footy it's a it's a different beast isn't it I'm sure you get knocked around a fair bit yeah it definitely is um I've had like my few niggles as everyone does this time of the year um, but I'm actually feeling quite good at the moment. Uh, I've had uh, a few games out and then we obviously had the bye week and, and so forth so I'm actually feeling reasonably fresh um, which is good coming into this time of the year uh, and yeah looking forward to Perth. Definitely. Mitch the third quarter uh, let me take you back there because there was a there was a three four minute period back into that um, third quarter where we sort of kicked away and, and built a bit of a lead. I think 32 points at, at three quarter time, and you were responsible uh, with one of those goals. You took a nice little mark and, and went back and threaded it. Um, I mean, t take us back to that third quarter and how important that was just to put the foot down because they had challenged. Yeah, they definitely did. Um, we knew it was going to be a tight tussle like it is against all sort of quality opposition in the finals. Um, but with the, with the style of footy that we play, we sort of seem to think that after that half time, uh, once we sort of wear the opposition down a little bit, we can kind of get that momentum shift back in our favour. So that we knew that that third quarter was going to be important. And um, like you saw, I think late in the piece, we sort of seemed to get a few sort of crucial goals, which sort of kicked us away from them um, at the end. So, but yeah, in terms of my goal, I was, I was happy just to hang on to the mark. I'd sort of been a little bit missing in action prior to that. So it was good to get one. Get, get one away and, and help this sort of team. And I think immediately after you, um, Angus Brayshaw was on the end of one, but on the end of some terrific work from Jack Viney, who mm -hmm. um, bullocked his way through a little sidestep there. And I don't know if you've watched the replay or listened to the commentary, but Bruce McAvaney, <laughs> he was, <laughs> it, 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 that was a moment. He, he just, he, he heaped praise on Jack Viney. Hibbo, have, you, have you heard it? Viney. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bit yeah, of a battering yeah, ram in there, isn't he? Oh, he does he, that with everyone, though, so. He, uh, well, he just, he was, <laughs> not he was really, I'm sure he did. Did uh, he not? 
Maybe he did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to go back to the tape. Jeez, he loves Jack Viney. How much do you love Jack Viney, though, Hibbert? Oh, similar to Nev. Like, he's just a bull. He, um, he, probably the biggest competitive animal I've ever met. Uh, you watch the way he plays and that's how he trains and that's how he's brought up with obviously Toddy being pretty yeah. similar himself. So, um, yeah, he, he tackles to hurt. He um, he hunts the ball. And he, if the ball's in a 50-50 contest, you can back him in to win it every time. And Especially the way we play with such a contested footy game, um, having Jack Viney in the middle definitely helps us. Mitch, uh, you spoke, obviously, the goal on the weekend kicked a crucial one against Geelong. For mine, that was Nathan Jones kicking it in in the beginning of the last quarter, but that, to me, was the sealer (laughs) when you nailed that one against the Cats. You don't mind the big moment either. Oh, look, I'll I'll take it if it comes. Um, That wasn't obviously sort of the plan. As you can see in the footage of me running into goal there, I was pretty keen to sort of dish it off because there was a couple of options, but... Uh, as it panned out, yeah, I was I was just pretty thankful that I think it was Henderson at the time slipped over and I had a bit of a free run uh, from about 60, 70 metres out. Um, and then thankfully it went through in the end. But yeah, as that happens, it's a bit of a numbing feeling. Like everyone sort of seems to t- like recount it and say that was the loudest they've heard the crowd all day. Mm. And I hardly heard anything at the time. It was. It was yeah. super loud. Do you feel the pressure? 90,000 at the MCG, you're playing in a final, pretty young player. Um in the heat of the moment like that, not necessarily. I think when, when it's like a um, like running down the wing like that, you sort of like, I don't know, you're sort of in, in the heat of the moment and you don't really think about it. If I was to be having a set shot, you probably would because you have too much time to sort of sit back and take it all in and hear the noise. But at the time, I was um, pretty comfortable running in and just doing what I'd normally do. And what you normally do, the finger, the celebration, <laughs> is that... Oh, look, it's been ramped up lately by Sammy Wiedemann, I think. He's, right. um, what, competition? Oh, not quite. It's just something that just comes naturally. But, like, I don't go out there sort of thinking I'm just going to stick the finger up and give the crowd a little <laughs> wave. But, um, look, I don't know. I enjoy it. More <laughs> of that, please. More of that, indeed. Um, and, and a similar moment um, in this match, uh, one of your old Essendon teammates, um, Melky kicking a, a really nice, really nice goal and a steadier at a really crucial time and then went back a little later and, and probably kicked the sealer. A nice little snap. He's, he's in a little purple, purple patch as well. Yeah, he's probably in career best form, Jake. Uh, that goal he kicked on his left, we needed that at the time. The Hawks were coming hard and I think they had maybe two or three in a row and, and the, you know, the score, I'm not sure what it was, but it was, you know, within two goals and yeah, I think he celebrated a little bit too early. It was one of those floaters that could bounce backwards and um, he was off celebrating to the crowd and I wasn't sure if it was in yet, but um, he kicked it. It was huge and we definitely needed that. Uh, as I said, they were coming and yeah, to, for him to kick that snap and take his 30 seconds to milk a bit more time off the clock definitely helped us late in the game. Let's talk about the challenge ahead, heading back to Perth. Um, won there in round 22 against West Coast. Different prospect this time around. Uh, Josh Kennedy back, darling in that game, was knocked up pretty early. Um, it's a formidable one. Definitely. Uh, they're two players that um, are real barometers for them. You know, Kennedy's arguably the best forward in the comp and Darling's had such a great year as well. So we're going to have our hands full down back with those guys uh, back in the team and obviously a hostile environment down at Optus, off, off the Stadium. So, um, yeah, we're ready for it. We, we take a bit of confidence out of the last win we had, mm. but obviously it's a different outfit now and the stakes are a lot higher with obviously a grand final next week to play in. So... Uh, we can't wait to get over there, but um, you know, we're going to have our hands full. It's going to be a hard game. Seen a bit um, written about in the lead up about this mantra about you know anyone anywhere. Is that the sort of attitude you boys both adopt going into this prelim final, Mitch? I'll start with you. Yeah, I think so. I think finals brings that sort of footy out where um, the best team on the day will definitely win, whether it be over in in Perth, which is like Hivo said, a pretty hostile environment and and their fortress to be playing in. I think that if we're to sort of go over there and and play uh, the, the brand of footy that we think we know we can bring, um, it won't really be a factor in the end and, and anyone can win. Did you get it on your terms against the Hawks? Because there's a lot written about, you know, the contested brand and, and all the rest of it. Did you actually get it on, on your terms? And do you think you can get it on your terms over in Perth? I think Hawthorne did really well. Um, they played, they tried to keep the ball off us at times and they did that in the first half. I think they even beat us in contested possession for the first half, which is... You know, that's our one would we we pride ourselves on that but in the end we did get it on our terms in a way and um 
we kicked off, kicked away and got the win. But yeah, West Coast obviously they like to hold possession of the ball, and that's something teams are starting to try to do a bit more to us. But yeah, if we can get the ball in um, in the contest and really turn it into a bit of a scrap, um, that's that's probably where we play our best footy. So we know we know what they're going to try to do to us, um, and they know what we're going to do to them. It's just whoever can get the game on their terms will end up on top. But um, Goody always said, if you're playing the right way and you're playing your best footy at the right time, um, you know, good things will happen. And at the moment, I feel like we're in a pretty good form. We get some good players, uh, some young players that are in red hot form. And if we can just keep keep going and plugging along, um, you know, it'll go a long way to a win. But this week, but obviously West Coast. Mm. They finished second for a reason, um, and yeah, they're a good team. A lot of people say it's the toughest trip in footy, but you guys don't seem to mind it. There was the round 22 win, and then uh, the previous year at Subi as well. Uh, do you feel like you match up well against them, or what from yeah. that experience is, have you taken out of I it? I feel like we do match up well against West Coast, um, but I, I enjoy getting away with the group. I think we, mm. we really galvanise tightly together when we get away together. It's a, it's like a little trip together and, um, you know, you, you make the most of spending a little bit more time together. I think that's something we've embraced over the last two years that I've been here, that when we're away, we um, we look forward to these opportunities to to win in these hostile environments. And um, yeah, this week's obviously up another level because it's in a prelim, but we enjoy the opportunity and the challenge. What about you personally, Hibbo? You know, a few years ago, you are at Essendon, now you're at, at, at the D's and you're playing in a prelim final. Is it a sort of pinch me moment? Yeah, it is a little bit. Obviously, yeah, leaving the club and uh, the year off and yeah, coming here, it's uh, there's so many things have happened over the last three, four years, um, or even over my whole football, AFL football career, really. But you know, Jake and I, had, before the first final, we, we looked at each other like we've been waiting for an opportunity yeah. like this for a while. It was a pretty cool moment, and to actually ha win two finals now, um, it's happened a bit quicker than I thought. I always saw the potential of playing finals at this footy club, but it's happening quicker than I anticipated and uh, I'm just loving it and just going to keep on plugging away because it's a really really good ride at the moment. Mitchy, what are they, what are they like together? Everyone says they're thick as thieves. <laughs> they are, they're like two peas in a pond, the old <laughs> Yvo and Malksham. But um, no, they've obviously got a close bond from the Essendon days so there's there's no questioning why they've got such a good friendship. So, But you're right, they just, I don't know, plug away. We're pretty, close. We're pretty yeah. close to him in the locker room. So. <laughs> yeah. Just a pest, couple yeah. of pests. I just sort of tuck away in the corner and just have a laugh to myself. And two guns. Jake's the pest, not me. <laughs> that is and, true. And Hibbo, what about the bloke sitting beside you? Who does he like to uh, spend a bit of time with? What's... Uh, well, he's, the, there's a group of boys that play a lot of cricket in the yes, locker room. Yes, I've heard about this. He's always <laughs> throwing his darts down and likes to think he can bat and bowl. He's probably... The lower end of the scale from most of them, but uh, <laughs> no, nah, there's who, who's in the who's in the who's in the crew. Uh, uh, Sammy Fr Wiedemann's definitely up there. Wieda, uh, Fritter, yeah, Timmy Smith, Oscar, yeah. Oscar, Oscar Oscar's, Oscar's always in there. He's he's pretty average. He's, his who, brother's jumped on board too. Who Tom was trying Wilson. to ban this cricket club? Jonesy was. Jonesy was. But then he he got and in. Then, and now he wants to bat every yeah. time we're in there. Oh, so. right, eh? I, think, I think we're at a point now where everyone on the list has at least played cricket once. Yeah. So no one can say they haven't given it a crack or enjoyed it. <laughs> And so. Mitchy, there was a nice article written about you in The Australian um, and talking about your career in the lead up to AFL level. You've actually had a bit of final success. I have had a little bit, yeah. Um, I played in a few grand finals uh, over my junior and senior career coming in before AFL. So, um, yeah, it's obviously hopefully going to hold me in some good stead in terms of um, not getting overawed by the situation if we were to sort of face a grand final possibly in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've played... One with Footscray a couple of years ago, which was um, which was the year I got drafted, um, and then an amateur league grand final as well with St Bernard's. So there's definitely been a bit of success there. So just enjoying the journey. Have the St Bernard's boys hit you up for tickets? No, they haven't yet. No one really hit me up for tickets just yet. Um, especially with Perth, obviously being on the other side of the country, I've only got uh, some grandparents and and probably my mum going over, but. Look, if the grand final came along, I'm sure everyone would come <laughs> watch out. So, <laughs> so uh, you are one win from a grand final, which is just an incredible achievement as it stands. But um, what does the week look like? How do you keep this week relatively normal? Um, we've got an eight-day break um, coming into this game, so which is 
typically pretty normal. So we'll have our sort of uh, recovery session like we did yesterday with a light jog and some gym. But in terms of uh, preparing for this week, uh, we'll have our main training session tomorrow, uh, a little bit of media sort of stuff this afternoon, um, and then probably fly out on Friday morning. So for us, that's what we did back four weeks ago. Uh, just the one, the one day before we sort of played, fly on Friday morning and just sort of try and keep the time zones similar so we're ready to go on Saturday. And as a lot of people have um, alluded to and spoken about, um, it, it's all about embracing the moment. We've done that for the last fortnight at least. Um, is that the same sort of mentality you're taking to Perth here, Bo? Yeah, definitely. I feel like one thing the coach has been really good at all year is keeping the weeks the same and uh, the messaging's always the same and we've said it all along through this whole finals campaign that we are embracing the challenge and enjoying the challenge and um, yeah we're just gonna keep on doing the same things because it seems to be working at the moment but um, you know finals footy is what you play footy for and we're just loving it at the moment. Mike Hubbard, Mitch Hannon joining us here on Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich. Uh, we're going to head into the outer after this short break. It is this the preliminary final edition of Inside Melbourne. Back with more very shortly. It is prelim final week here on Inside Melbourne. Welcome back with thanks to Zurich. Michael Hibbert's here. Um, Mitch Hannon's here also. You're a debutante, so you get this magical question with thanks to Zurich. It is, Mitchie, what do you truly love? What do I truly love? Um, oh, there's plenty of things I love outside of footy. Um, obviously, I could go with the, the stock standard typical answer of my family and friends. Um, yeah, correct. But you won't. Which I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Um, Oh, look, I've got a few different hobbies. We were just talking about it before. I definitely love holidays. Yeah. Um, something I'm looking forward to. Um, obviously, post-season football. I might be going over to Europe for a few weeks. Um, what else do I do? Beach guy? I am a little bit of a beach guy. Not in season. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the type to sort of whack on the wetsuit and go swimming in the middle of winter. But um, over the summer, I definitely love getting down to the beach. I've got a couple of mates that have some some caravans and, and places down by the sort of Torquay lawn area. Um, so... Yeah, definitely love the beach. Nice. All right. Well, let's get stuck into some questions from the outer. Um, this one is from Melbourne Demons. I don't think the official Melbourne Demons, but we'll go with it. Who do you think will shine in the prelim? Who will shine? I reckon Tommy McDonald will probably... I know it's probably hard because he's playing some great footy, but he could go to another level, I reckon. He's just such a, a dominant sort of presence up forward for us so and you saw it do, saw him do it last last year in west coast sort of kick the sealer for us so he could be one to stand up how good are tommy's jukes by the way yeah it, been, it just everything sticks yeah he's been unreal to you, if you're in trouble um and you've got the ball you just want to dump it to anyone you you dump it to him or gawney at the moment because their hands have been un unreal um <coughs> he kicks goals in big moments tommy so he's been really good and then i saw the end of that third quarter just um as the uh the clock was ticking down he actually went back and just took a nice little mark on the siren as well just to recount the old days in the uh, in the back line anyway <laughs> what's next <laughs> very good um who out of the two of you is more of a show-off this is from sarah Cl chaston you so, talk about that, <laughs> i don't know I prob probably me to be honest i'm always doing something stupid in the locker room <laughs> so you could say that's showing off or just being an idiot um mitchy's pretty quiet and reserved and a bit more respectable. So I'll, I'll say me, because I'm a nice bloke. Um, Hibbo, there's a f quite a few, and I think there might have been, as I was listening to the podcast last time, somewhere in Greece <laughs> when Hibbo was a guest. <laughs> no um, worries, Hollywood. Mid-season. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the nickname, about about Pig. Um, 
But there's a question here about whether your new lovely fiance is happy with the nickname. Uh, I don't know if she'd be real happy with it, but she just cops it. Um, <laughs> she doesn't have a choice. It started oh, years and years ago. A mate of mine started calling it. I had, I think it has something to do with the copious amounts of food I can eat at one one time. Um, but uh, yeah, she she got no choice. Uh, I think if. If she had her way, it would uh, be stamped out, but it is what it is. Uh, when's have you set a date for the wedding? No, no. I was, we've got a holiday in October. We're going to the States for a month, and I said we're not talking about it until after that. So it'll be... <laughs> Just hit up a little Vegas chapel? Yeah, maybe. We're going to <laughs> Vegas, good, so actually. we could do that. that it'll be Get a lot more cost-effective. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd much rather do it that way, but... I think she's got might her, not fly. Yeah, she's got her <laughs> plans. I'm sure. Uh, early 2020, I think, might be the might be the date at the moment. I'm not sure. Long term planning, like it. Um, Fish Williams, 89, asks both of you, who's your biggest inspiration? That's not a footballer. It's not a footballer. I get a lot of inspiration out of my my dad. I know that's probably a cliche, but um, he's one that's always sort of believed in me along the journey. I obviously was a, a mature age recruit and, mm. and didn't come through the normal path, so. He's someone that I look up to a lot and, and speak to about football t- across across the years, across my journey. What, what's so. Dad's name? Give him a shout out. Uh, Graham. <laughs> Graham. So G'day, Graham. You probably have a listen to this. Definitely. Good stuff. Hibbo? Yeah, I'll go along the same path. I'll probably say mum. Um, yeah, it's just probably the best mum you could ask for, I guess, and always love um, you know, her responses after games. And um, But then if you're looking outside of footy and like you know other sports athletes I, I love watching Tom Brady uh, videos and stuff I probably find myself watching one before each game and get a little bit of inspiration out of it on game day yeah yeah okay. I'll, there's little montages of him um, I'm a massive Tom Brady fan so I watch those quite a bit and uh, yeah he's, he's pretty he's a superstar and he's good to watch so I like those videos and yeah. big NFL fan yeah, I like the NFL. I'm really getting into it. We've got a fantasy league at the D's at the moment, and I just got my first win on the weekend, which was nice. Over? Uh, our fitness bloke, Riga. So oh, I absolutely smashed him, so he won't be wrapped <laughs> for that. Uh, come Friday, uh, you'll both be jumping on a plane to Perth, which brings us to Rosa Deverell's question, who asks, who is the most annoying or painful player to sit next to on a long-haul flight or a trip to Perth. Should we go three, two, one? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> three, three, two, one, track. track. <laughs> <laughs> he always gets that, uh, that he, answer. He, he yeah. pops a bit of a whack. Is it me? just the, the energy and the just can't sit still? He just, he'll have a convo with one person and then you he'll ask you a question and then before you even answer, he's already asking someone else a question. He doesn't <laughs> care what you have to say. He's just like... You know, he's having four different convos at one time. He's just full on the whole time. He's hilarious to be around, <laughs> but sometimes hilarious. if you just want a break, <laughs> he's not the guy you want to be sitting next to if you want to have a sleep on a plane. I can see that. <laughs> um, Life of Mus, I think, asks, if you weren't playing footy, what would you be doing? Jeez, I don't know. I was a forklift driver as it, when I got drafted, so I'm glad I got drafted. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I didn't get drafted where I'd be or what I'd be doing, but after footy, I'd pretty interested in staying involved inside a footy club in some capacity whether it's development coach or or whatever I'm not too sure yet but that's uh, I just love the environment I'm in now and hopefully can stick around in one Uh, I was prior to getting drafted working at an architecture firm so I'd probably were you really yeah so I studied for a few years and then I was working full time for about 10 months um, before I got picked up so I'd probably be doing that at the moment still be working working in the architecture firm yeah it was yeah I was just working in in the CBD um and got a few close mates there that I uh, was working with. And, yeah, mainly on sort of commercial, a few residential projects, but it was good fun. Yeah. How different is corporate life to footy life? Oh, it's a, a lot different. I was, like, I recap it on it sometimes myself. The life I was living beforehand, obviously I was enjoying the architectural work, but after hours I was going out to VFL football uh, until 9, 10 o'clock at night and then getting up at 7 o'clock to start work again. And then it sort of flicked a switch and now I'm sort of just full time running around kicking footies and having a laugh with mates. So it's a very different lifestyle, but it's something I'm enjoying. Can I take you, we spoke off air about this. I want to take you back to the first few months you were drafted and you actually had a, an incident on the training track where you lost your teeth. I did, yeah. What, what happened there? Uh, we were out at Casey Fields, just a regular sort of um, training session in the pre-season and Paddy McKenna, who was actually one of the few guys I knew coming into the club, um, I grew up playing a little bit of junior footy with him, 
got a bit of a stray elbow, um, wasn't wearing a mouth guard, which is normal for me. I don't normally wear a mouth guard at training. I'm always a big advocate of wearing one in games, but um, just heard a big crack, crunch, and um, sort of began to talk and realise I had a lisp and sort of like, <laughs> oh, no. And um, you can sort of tell by the looks on people's faces when you start looking around what's gone down. Um, yeah. And yeah, we spent about 20 minutes or so looking so for some teeth in the grass. Bit of a scavenger hunt. Pretty much. In um, the grass. Yeah, like I was all new to the football world at that time, so I was pretty astounded by the fact that it made the news. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it does. <laughs> <laughs> like you both said, it's been a slow news day. But you're right, I've probably come up better for it. I think Paddy's probably done me a favour. Uh, teeth have never looked nice better. Nice pair of choppers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> pretty happy with them. Very good. Uh, Kate Malone asked both of you, do you have any pre-game rituals? Hibbo, I guess, I don't know if your Tom Brady videos are a ritual, are they? Uh, not a ritual, but I do have a few things I do. I... Um, I have hot cold showers, so yeah. before I just before I throw my gear on and head, get in the car, I'll, it's it's hard in the middle of winter sometimes, but like I have to do it three times: go yeah. cold, hot, cold. Yeah, so that's hard to do when it's freezing cold. But I'll do that, and I actually it sounds a bit. Uh, I won't say it sounds a bit weird, but I actually kiss my jumper three times as well. Okay. So I've always done that. Um, Lucky number three. I don't know why I do it. Move I the tap put it on. And I try to hide it. From, I, try get, I try go on the other room when I do it, so the boys aren't thinking I'm a weirdo. <laughs> so I'm like, grab the no, jumper and kiss that. it three times. So that's, that's fair cool. enough. You understand that, Mitch? Oh, I'm a lot more laid back. I don't really <laughs> have any superstitions <laughs> or uh, weird traits like that. <laughs> I always said, but I just, I'll always often go out before the game and have some shots at goal from sort of weird angles with a few of the younger boys like Spargo and, and Bailey Fritch. But other than that, just. Usual sort what of about break. game day routine or, or the night before the game? Uh, I'm a big advocate of, of having sort of carbs like a, a pasta meal. I often have like a bolognese um, and getting to bed early, early, obviously. But other than that, not too structured. Pretty Just relaxed what, What's the living situation? Are you um, out with a few other boys or...? I'm not, no. I'm off with, uh, with a few mates that I went to high school with, oh, yeah. um, which I tend to enjoy. It sort of gives me a little bit of an outlet away from footy. I can sort of go home and not have to always be talking about the game or training or stuff like that. So, yeah, just some close mates. I actually live over the other side of the city. I think I'm the only one over there yeah. um, near North Melbourne, just with some mates from high Do school. Do you have any rules where they're not allowed to go out the night before the game yeah, or anything like that? that? Yeah, like, I know what you mean. Come uh, at three o'clock. I was, pretty, I was pretty strategic when I first got the group together to sort of move out with. So, luckily enough, they're all pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. They're yeah. all working full time. and No one yeah. goes out that late anymore, do they? <laughs> oh, coming no. from you. <laughs> no, I have in the off season. <laughs> Every now and then, maybe. Off season. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Melbourne win, which is quite often for you. Yeah, well. Yeah, you just got home now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just dusted That's himself off. Looking dusty. Picked himself up out of the gutter. <laughs> Eyes are a bit red. Anyway, um, let's move on, shall we? Uh, here's one from Jai Hope to you, Hibbo. Uh, I take it he's a he might be a young defender or a defender up, up and coming. He asks, what's your biggest tip to become a good defender? Uh, oh, biggest tip. I mean, I guess the f one thing we coach as, um, you know, the back, back line coach, Troy Chaplin, drives into us is always defence first. Uh, attack comes off your good defence. Um, so obviously work on your one-on-one -on -one craft. Um, always make sure you're really strong at, at, at beating your opponents and, um, and, and reading cues to, to get the ball from there, I guess, is something that I find a strength of mine is being able to defend hard, but then when the ball, when we win the ball, knowing when to get off and and get the ball myself. So that's something um, you, your coach can coach you into, but that's probably something that will help you. Who's your toughest opponent you've come up against? Oh, over the years I've had so many. I mean, I generally get the resting mids. So I've had Gary Ablett probably when he was in his prime, and you know you get Chris Judd when he was playing pretty well when I was younger. Like Silverioli was a really tough opponent. Um, you know, all, all, yeah, like Silverioli, I used to always get a bit nervous when I was playing on him because you know you might keep him pretty quiet for three quarters, and then he'll bob up and kick three goals. Like Stevie Johnson was probably a mm -hmm. tough one as well that I over the years that I struggled up against. But um, yeah, it's a lot of them. 
Um, Hayley Russ takes us back to Friday night. She wants to know what it's like or what it was like being on the G after that finals win over the Hawks. Um, you recall the, the Demon fans, they stayed till the very end until uh, the seven boys had done all their post interviews and there was just a, an eruption, a big chant which went around mm. the ground, just a Melbourne chant. What was that like, lads? Yeah, that's when you definitely get to soak it in, I reckon. Like I said before, you can be playing the game and it's all sort of white noise in the background, but when you get the opportunity to sort of pass out a ball at the end and, and the crowd is all sort of on their feet and, and sort of cheering you off with a bit of a chant, it's, um, it's a pretty special moment. This is quite a moment for the for the fans as well. You yeah. do, do you sort of feel that? Yeah, oh, it was unreal being in the middle and, yeah. um, to be able to witness that, and you kind of just look up into the the top tier, and the crowd's still there, the fans are still there, and the MCG's still nearly packed after you know 30 minutes. The gas siren's gone, and the Melbourne chants going. Um, you definitely do soak it in, like Mitch said. Um, you take a moment to. To, yeah, to soak it in and then you go sing the song and back on to the next week. But um, we, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a nice, nice half hour after that siren went, that's for sure. And you've got to give them credit this week as well. I know I looked at flights, they yeah. over a grand mm. each way uh, for people to fork out that sort of money. And there's, there's people driving over, you know, yeah. doing a 35 hour drive across. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah, that's um. It's unbelievable effort by our fans that do get over there. Um, you know, we'll make sure we, we get around them um, if when we can after the game or before the game if they're at training. Um, we'll make sure that we appreciate the effort that these guys have gone to, to to make the effort to go over. I've got a lot of family going over as well. So hopefully I don't think we'll uh, put a dent in the amount of fans that the West Coast <laughs> fans have. But, you know, their support's... Um, going to be unbelievable. I think last count, 3,000 travelling uh, Melbourne supporters, so that's pretty uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, and there's some sort of plan to beam um, a live shot of Melbourne supporters at Fed Square. There could be somewhere mm. in the order of five, six, seven thousand 7,000 there um, into the into the dressing rooms. Wow, that's remarkable. So that's just so, you, just so you, can, uh, you can see the red and blue army back here. That'd be cool. I was going to ask, okay, so if you had to do the road trip to Perth, we're going to rule out track. Clearly, no one wants to travel with him for that long. Um, who would you take or, and who wouldn't you take? Uh, 35 hours in a car. 35? Is it 35? 35. Wow. Are we playing? <laughs> are, we, are we going 35 hours to play or is it just... No, just track? road tripping. Oh, I'd go with Bernie and Jake and we'd probably have a few cartons in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, never mind. Can I come? Yeah, you can come clean. A couple of mobile pubs well. across the way. Se- we've got one more seat. Katie, do you want to come on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd probably take some of my mates. Probably, I'd probably take Paddy McKenna and Tim Smith and maybe even Oscar. Just some, some good cricket chat on the way out. Probably some car cricket yeah. as well. Maybe summer road trip and have the cricket on. Bernie's not in, not in charge of the music though. That's, that's Has he the got one awful, rule. Awful. Oh, he's old, you know. Yeah, he likes, well, he's old what's there. his go-to? Old music from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with old music. What's wrong hey, with eighties? Uh, yeah, but some of it's good, but the stuff he listens to is no good. Every now and then in the gym, it, that someone gives him rain of the uh, of the stereo, and it's it's never good. What's your go-to? I'm mix. I'm just a Spotify mix kind of guy. I yeah, just let it go. I don't really. Yeah, it's just, so fresh. So hot hits from so 99. Fresh. <laughs> it's cringe really that. <laughs> Probably got time for a couple more. Katie, is there one that caught your eye there? Um, well, one particularly. Um, the infamous. Uh, I don't even know how you say that afterwards. But anyway, you're about to write in history for Melbourne FC. How strong are your beliefs that you can make it to the end? Uh, I definitely believe we can. Uh, we're a young and upcoming group and um, personally I haven't been through the sort of the down periods that Melbourne have been through in the past, obviously been, only been here for a couple of years, but you can definitely tell um, by the playing group uh, that have been here for that over that time and some of the coaching group that something is building quite special and we seem to be playing some really good football at the right time. So I think with the young group that we've got, there's definitely a belief that um, we can go all the way. You echo those sentiments, Hibber? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a belief in this group that we can uh, pull this off. Uh, obviously, there's still a few hurdles in front of us, but um, the belief that we've got as a group, um, why not us, you know? Like we're, we're looking forward to it, and yeah, hopefully it can happen. Well, I think this podcast is part of the reason why the revival has been so oh, emphatic clearly. Uh, clearly. this year, Katie. <laughs> so um, let's hope that we... Well, we will still be here regardless of the result next week, but let's hope we've got two weeks left in us. 
um, because we've still got so many great stories to tell and so many great questions to ask from the outer. Hey, and as Hibo said, why not us? Um, hey, we're going to go road tripping over to Perth. I'm actually going to fly. I'm not going to jump in a car. Um, <laughs> Work's yeah. paying for me, so yeah, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to get a trip on work, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Katie, you're looking forward to it too, no doubt. Yeah, can you shut those West Coast fans up I'll over do, there? I'll do my best. A lot of your mates over there, former uh, Perth mates in yeah, the stands. Yeah, I know. I'm going to absolutely cop it, I reckon. Yeah, well, you won't be... They'll be copying it yeah, if, yeah, uh, if we win, true. when we win. Uh, boys, Mitch, Hibbo, thanks so much for your time on Inside Melbourne. Good luck uh, with the trip that is Perth. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thanks for having us. us. And to all the listeners out there, let's hope we are celebrating a big Melbourne win and just geeing up the fact that we're in a grand final this time next week. From the team at Inside Melbourne, it's goodbye.